In the first part of Lecture 5, we talked about Carnot cycles and Carnot engines. And let's just summarize briefly uh, what we found there. What we found was that the efficiency of a Carnot engine is 1 minus the temperature of the low temperature reservoir divided by the temperature of the high temperature reservoir. And this placed a fundamental limit on the efficiency of a perfect engine. The perfect engine means that each process in the cycle of the Carnot engine is reversible and the engine itself is frictionless. So this is the maximum efficiency of a heat engine or the Carnot engine, which means that we're using reversible processes and we have frictionless pistons. The only way you can get an efficiency of one here is to have zero as your low temperature reservoir, absolute zero Kelvin, or have an infinitely high temperature for the high temperature reservoir. Both those cases will give zero here, so you can get an efficiency of one. But you find, experimentally, that E is always less than one. That's experimental finding. Again, it's called the second law of thermodynamics because it's a law. It can't be proved from some more fundamental principles. It's just a generalization of everyday experience. So what we find is that the efficiency of an engine has to be less than one, meaning you can never get a reservoir with absolute zero Kelvin. So uh, key points here is that we're using reversible. Let's further say that, just summarizing the previous lecture, that we had, for instance, uh, heat transferred in from the high temperature reservoir divided by that temperature plus the heat transferred out of the engine divided by the low temperature reservoir. That it was equal to zero, which implies that some function called Q over T is a state function. Why is that? Well, remember the Carnot cycle. You go from some initial state through some various intermediate states, but you end up back at the same initial state. So that means that if you go through that cycle and get zero, some quantity that you're adding up over that cycle, that's equal to zero. Maybe that quantity is a state function. In fact, that's what we're going to do. Let's say uh, from uh, our discussion of the Carnot engine and Carnot cycle, one statement that can say about the second law of thermodynamics, this is one point of, or one way of saying it, it is impossible to completely convert heat into work in an engine. Some heat will always have to be taken out in the cycle to a low temperature reservoir. So that's, um, Again, it's a law, it's our, a generalization of what we find in everyday experience. So we can never really convert all the heat into work in an engine. Let's define that state function Q over T as, a, uh, as entropy. So we'll use the symbol S for entropy. I'll just rewrite that here. DS, we're going to define as DQ reversible there's reverse that's important over temperature. Why reversible? We're sort of generalizing from the Carnot cycle and that had reversible processes, reversible steps in it. The heat transferred in a reversible process divided by the temperature is equal to what we're going to find as entropy and given the symbol capital S. Well let's integrate this uh, ds, the integral there. That'll be the integral of dq reversible over T. This is a state function, so this will just be initial minus final, delta S. If we integrate this, let's assume temperature is constant. So here we'll just have Q reversible, the total heat transferred in the reversible process to or from the system, divided by temperature, where here we're assuming constant temperature. So that's where this comes from. Let's look at this particular expression here which I'll reproduce here. So the integral, and if you put a circle in the integral sign, what that circle means is a closed path. So you're integrating from one point through some path and back to the same point. So if we integrate ds, s is a state function, so this would be equal to zero because uh, entropy is a state function. So you start from some place, go some path, end up at the same place you started from, ds is equal to zero. And this means also equal to zero is the path integral, a closed path integral of dq reversible over t. That's uh, some introduction to the entropy 
and we'll develop that a little further.